Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. And tonight I'm going to show my workflow for the Lion Nebula. Now I actually captured and processed this data back in October. I'm just now getting around to uh, uh, running a video on it. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly popular target, but interestingly, it's the first time I've ever shot it. Now with this one, I used my Astronomics AT115 EDT, the 115 millimeter triplet refractor. I also used a ZWO ASI 1600 monochrome camera and I use Astrodon 5 nanometer, uh, 5 nanometer filters uh, for hydrogen alpha, sulfur, and O3. Uh, total integration time uh, is a little bit over 28 hours and um, processing on this was pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing too fancy. Uh, so here's the uh, stacked uh, S2 data. S2 is always going to be a little bit grainier than uh, hydrogen. And here's the HA. So lots of nice detail in this area here. And yeah, this is it's not stretched, it's all linear. And uh, here's the O3. So we got some strong O3 in this target as, as well. And so as usual, what I do is um, I go ahead and crop out the um, stacking artifacts. And then I run dynamic background extraction. And then I run uh, deconvolution. So all of that's done before um, before the stretch. And you can see here that uh, these are the different masks that, that I used for the um, deconvolution. Here's the PSF for each one, S2, H3, HA, and O3. And these are the results. So usually with uh, S2 and O3, you don't see too much of a difference other than a tightening of the stars typically more noticeable with the with the HA. And here, so this, this shows you before deconvolution and that's after deconvolution. So huge change in the stars, uh, but even if you like look in this area, we're getting a, a nice sharpening of the of the details. So then I use the LRGB combination tool and I put each of the deconvoluted channels in uh, a single image and this is the output. And again, we're still linear. We haven't stretched it yet. And uh, I made a clone and I flipped it because <laughs> I don't know if I'm, if, if I'm the only one, but I mean, this is usually the orientation you're used to seeing and it's just, it messes with my head to work on it when I see something that's upside down. I mean, you know, there's no upside down in space, but anyway, I had to rotate it to be able to work on it. And then I removed the stars. And yeah, so still linear, right? So uh, I'm doing star removal now while in linear state because I find that I can control the star size and the star color better by stretching that separately from the image. And um, then I did the initial stretch. And I'll just step through all the changes that I made here. So you can see right off the bat, I'm working with some masks. Uh, the main issue I thought was that this area was too dark. And so that's why you see me masking this to try and brighten this, this uh, dark area up. Actually, it looks like I'm darkening it now. And yeah, we're still, now we're working on the, uh, the nebula itself. Inverting, right? So what are we doing here? So we're, we're trying to tame this purple and magenta. So invert, subtract green, invert back, pull back on curves a little bit. That, um, by doing that, you actually reveal more detail. Some of that detail gets washed out sometimes. 
It's an interesting ripple effect going on in um, in this area. You can see that I'm working on this brighter area. Sometimes with uh, nebula that are really bright in some areas, it's hard to uh, it's hard to make them fit without either making the rest of it too dark, or if you try to protect this and tone it down on the bright area, then it kind of gives the whole image kind of a flat appearance. But yeah, I mean, this is all curves work. Nothing really uh, special going on there. Doing some more work. Uh, I'm thinking next year, I want to point my 8-inch scope at this, because this area right here is just really cool. I'm not entirely sure what what this structure is, what this flow is. If anyone knows, feel free to drop a comment. And so, I mean, that was pretty much it as far as uh, nebula goes. Uh, not a whole lot on here, just a little bit of masks and a little bit of curves. Uh, let's work on the stars now. So just like the image before, the stars are uh, linear. Let me uh, zoom this in a bit. So we're applying some stretching, right? It's always, uh, you know, it's always a, a matter of taste how much stars you want. I don't mind a lot of stars as long as they remain pretty tight and they don't obscure the image. Okay, so I think this is where I ended up with stretching it. Now, we got a lot of purple and magenta in there and, right, the colors are not quite great, but, I mean, this is easy to fix. So invert, subtract green, invert back, subtract green again. And I mean, this is where we ended up with. Sometimes I'll increase saturation, sometimes not, but we've got a nice distribution of bluish and orange stars. A lot of white stars. I probably could have pushed the saturation a little bit more. And then after that, I put the stars and the starless image together. All right, here's our starless image. And I just use the pixel math formula. And oh, it's not in there. Uh, but and I know I show this every time of your video I do, but uh, Star Exterminator has the formula right, right there. See that starless time stars. So I literally just have that line on a text file and just copy paste it in. And that gave me this here. And then I made a clone and I tweaked it a little bit more and I applied a noise reduction with um, noise exterminator. And so there it goes, a relatively straightforward Hubble palette capture and process of the Lion Nebula. So if anyone has any questions or comments, feel free to drop uh, a note down below. Certainly give this video a thumbs up if you uh, enjoyed it. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I've got a lot of data to, to churn through now. We, we actually are having some bad weather, but it's fine because I've got I've got like M31, Sculptor, uh, Little Rosette, um, and, and a couple others out there. Even Butterfly, Grab Butterfly Light in the season. Uh, so I've got a whole ton of data that I'm going to be chewing on over the next couple of weeks anyway. And uh, lots of workflow videos coming up. I've got some other stuff not related to workflow videos also planned uh, that should be coming up pretty soon. So anyway, please subscribe and uh, have a good evening. <music>